Hello, hola, and welcome to the wonderful website webinar with Jackie Barry. I do writing without waffle for websites and other marketing communications. Uh, welcome to people listening in from the UK, from Spain, and from anywhere else in the world. We're going to start with a story, and the story comes from a traditional English book by Lewis Carroll, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Mm -hmm. And when Alice went through the looking glass and she was wandering around in the woods, she was completely lost. And eventually she came upon the Cheshire cat smiling and sitting in a tree. And she asked the cat, which way should I go from here? And the cat said, well, where are you trying to get to? She said, I don't much mind where I get to. And he said, in that case, it doesn't matter which way you go. And it's the same with marketing. All marketing has an objective. If you don't know the objective that you're trying to achieve, then it actually doesn't really matter what you do to get there. And when you're talking about websites, every page of a website has its own objective, and every bit of content on the page has its own objective. So I'll be talking about objectives a lot during this call. Yeah. We had a question. And the question was from Claire. And she told me that she's on the point of redesigning this website. And she, um, if I scroll down here, she thinks the background needs to be black. My answer would be no. I think that the background needs to be white with black writing. Now, the reason for that, it's easier to read. And anything that makes it easier for people to read is a good thing. The next thing she asked, she is thinking of changing some of the titles on the menu bar. Now, I don't know what she's thinking of changing them to, but what we can see is you've got home, EFT that drops down to testimonials, about me, services, events, groups, and workshops, and that drops down to various different things, promotions, specialist areas, contact, and then her blog. Now, what is in the mind of people when they land on a website like this? She's got two audiences. She's got people who already know who she is, and she's got people who don't already know who she is. The people who already know who she is are only going to be looking for one thing. What they'll be looking for is her contact details. And the normal place for contact details is top right. So. On this website, you can see there's a contact link. What I would say is the text on these links being italic is, is kind of hard to read. But one click could be one click too many. It could be a chance to lose them. So much better to have contact details here in the top right, a phone number, an email address, a call me back button, whatever it is. That has become the standard place for contact details to be. The people that just want to immediately get in touch, maybe like you and me, use Google like an address book, and they'll be searching her. They'll be searching her business name. They already know her. And they will instantly, at a glance, know where to look and be able to find her contact details and get in touch. Now, then there's the people who don't already know who she is. And those people will have landed on this website because they will have been searching for EFT, Costa Blanca, perhaps or something to do with EFT. Anyway, the point is they won't have landed on this site by accident. They will probably already know what EFT is. So it isn't the job of the website to persuade them that they need EFT. What it is to persuade them why they should choose Claire and her company to provide them with EFT. And that's what's missing from these links. So in the about section, or even as a top level navigation, it might be worth adding a page called Why Me? Now, the reason for that is that's what's in the mind of the people in the audience. They will be thinking, why should I choose this EFT provider rather than another one? Now, there's some good stuff on this website too. One of the main things you see is sign up to receive our newsletter, special offer and freebies. And it's asking for an email address and a first name. And it's got a scroll bar. I'll scroll down and see what I see. Uh, just the little logo thing underneath there. So I'm not sure that's necessary. And I'm not sure anyone would scroll down to see it if they weren't reviewing the website. A couple of things about that that I think can make it work harder. 
First thing I would say, don't call it a newsletter because hardly anyone signs up for those anymore. All our inboxes are much too busy and we don't have time to read the newsletters that we want to read. So call it something else that adds value. Give it a unique title. Um, maybe, I don't know, Claire's Tips or something. She has put special offers and freebies and that might tempt people to sign up. That's good. The fact that these are boxes is good because more people will fill in a box that will click a text link. The other thing I would change is the word subscribe because that sounds too much like a newsletter, but it's good. It's a button and it's a good that it changes color when you hover over it, as you can probably see. Uh, more people click buttons than text links. But you could change that button to yes, please, or grab my freebies now, or some kind of um, more friendly wording that is going to give more personality to the website. Now I'm going to close that so that I can see what's underneath. And what I see is we've got um, a heading for your full potential with 2016 in a tint behind it and text welcome to the world of EFT with Claire where new beginnings begin. Um, again, I would say I'm not a massive fan of the font here, the typography. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the logo at the top of the page too. So sorry, Claire. Um, but only because I think it's hard to read. And when people are reading on screen or are navigating a website, one of your objectives is to make it as easy as possible for them. Let me scroll down a little bit. Let me show you how to succeed is what I would call top down language rather than bottom up language. Top down language is the company talking to the audience. And what will work better is if you use bottom up language that answers what's in it for me from the audience point of view. So maybe calling it so you want to succeed or you need some help to succeed or you're on your way to success, but you're not quite there yet would be something that is words from the point of view of the reader rather than the point of view of the writer. And then it starts, Claire is a qualified EFT practitioner. Let me zoom in in case it's not too easy to read on the Hangout. So hopefully you can see that now. Again, that's top down language. That's talking about Claire. What I would say is start the homepage about the person reading it, not about the person selling the business. You've got an about page. The about page is where they can read all about you. Rather than giving a list of depression, pain, phobias, here's all the things I can do, spreading out your wares on the table, what you would start with, are you suffering from depression or pain or phobias? The word you is so powerful in all marketing copy. That's what you'd want to do on this homepage. What you wouldn't have is things like, she has a special interest in. Sorry, Claire. The reason is that's about you and it fails the who cares test. No one cares what you're interested in. They only care, care about what they're interested in. So here you're talking about cancer patients. So you'd have a little section on here saying if you're currently undergoing cancer treatment, then you're probably experiencing fear and anxiety. But me, my treatment, I can help with pain management um, following surgery, surgery, chemo or radiotherapy. Do you see how I'm switching the language from the point of view of the company to the point of view of the person reading it? Now, there's some good stuff here, too. 100% money back guarantee takes away the risk for the person buying the service because people don't want to spend their money in the wrong place. Therefore, if you take away the risk by offering them all their money back, if it doesn't work or they're not happy, there's very small chance they're going to claim on it. And to be honest, if you did have an unhappy client, chances are you give them money back anyway. So why not use it in your marketing? So that's a good idea. And it is bigger and bolder than some of the rest of the text. So it's unmissable. Even better for it to be a graphic or a, a flag or a flash or a shield or something so that visually the eye cannot help but notice it. Here we've got heading areas covered include. That again is what I call top down language and better to change it to bottom up language, you can choose. So again, it's using the word you. So somebody that wants relationship, help, career help, inner help, or have got problems, um, they will know which section to go to. Um, can't help noticing a typo here, sorry, as a copywriter for over 30 years, they jump out at me from 50 yards away. 
What this is missing also is what I call, or what all marketing people would call a call to action. If somebody is interested in relationship help, you'd have a button here that says, get help, or make inquiry, or find out more, or continue reading. Same for career, same for this one about existing problems, and the same one for development and growth. And that would take them through to a page that deals with their particular issue. Scrolling down again, you can see this footer has some kind of um, problem because the footer is giant and it's repeating these social media links. Good to connect your social media links, by the way, with your website and good to have copyright on there. I think they're great tips. Uh, I never thought of, um, I have a little bit of the same text I try to offer and what I can do and what, what all the things I know, but it's a great point to take it and turn it around and say, um, what do you need? And so to see it from the viewer's point of view, from their needs, I think it's a great point. So um, I'll definitely use that. He rang up and he said, I've got a new website, I've spent thousands of pounds on a new website. And what's really good about it, you're really going to like it because you can get an online quote. And I thought, fantastic, instant quotes. That's going to save two or three days in my relationship with my clients. That's a good thing. And I went to visit his new website. And sure enough, it looked amazing. And I could see he'd spent lots of money on it. But the first thing I had to do in order to get a quote was, you won't believe this, choose what printing press my banner was going to be printed on. Well, I, as a user, I don't know which printing press is supposed to be used. I know the size of the banner I want. I know how many colors I want on it. I probably know what I want it to say. It's not my job to choose the printing press. It's the printer's job to choose the printing press. And that's a really extreme example of a top-down approach to a website. But a lot of coaches and consultants and similar businesses make the same mistake because they list all their services in that same way and expect the user to choose it. What they need to do is be the one that suggests the solution. What they want the user to do is to navigate their own way to the website to find only the information that they need. So one of the objectives of the website is to convince somebody you're the right person to choose or the right company to choose. We talked about that already. Um, so you have why me and you um, answer their questions and demonstrate your expertise and add loads of value. It could be video, it could be FAQs, it could be the blog, it could be um, embedded social media content, whatever it is, instead of having just sales pages. <laughs>